What's up, guys? So uh, I think part of like being a vlogger is just kind of like giving some entertainment and value. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is this new hobby that I've discovered, which I haven't even really fully gotten into yet, but I've been able to really immerse myself in the information and just dump myself on motorcycles. So I'm learning a lot about safety obviously that's super important with this this hobby this sport and and just what what i was all entailed with becoming a new rider so you know what kind of helmets to buy what jackets to get what sort of sort of motorcycles i want to look at and it's it's kind of overwhelming it's like drinking from a fire hose you really don't know a lot of this stuff until you just immerse yourself in it so anyways i have a few decisions that are pretty big right now i got to figure out uh, between basically two different bikes that I'm looking at, a Suzuki or a Yamaha. One's an MT-07, used to be an FZ-07. It's, uh, it's kind of their, their naked bike, which is a really low, not a lot of paneling, kind of looks a little retro. Um, sport bike, it's a 698 cubic centimeter displacement. So it's a pretty big engine for a, an actual first bike, but all the other bikes out there are kind of just a little bit too small and you're not really gonna be able to grow in them. So. Uh, generally speaking, you can you can start off with a really small bike like a Honda Grom, which is a 125 cc, and the bigger the engine is, the faster, the more acceleration, the more power you have in the bike. It's also going to cost you more. In my case, I have the luxury of, of kind of looking at a bit bigger budget bikes, but at the same time, I do want to be mindful of something that's just like overkill. For example, I'm not going to go out there and buy a Ducati Monster um, as my first bike just because I, I I think it would probably be a little bit too strong for me. But anyways, I've also got to figure out if I'm getting a white helmet, a white jacket, or a black helmet and a white jacket, or a black helmet and a black jacket. Black on black seems really say, really like kind of the most sexy look. Uh, the bikes that I'm looking at are black. So, you know, one of them has red trim. That's the Suzuki SV650. The, um, the actual jackets, one is like pretty white. Um, it's like off-white, so it doesn't get super dirty. It's not like pure white. And then the other one is, and then it comes with a white, there's a white helmet that you could wear, or there's like a matte black that looks really sick. So, but then there's the safety concerns of being less visible when you're wearing black versus white. Um, so I'm gonna go to the store tomorrow, I think, and just test them all out, just kind of try out the combinations, see what looks better, and uh, take a few pictures and just kind of like think about it and then just pull the trigger. I'll probably end up getting variations of everything, um, the downside with the helmets is they're like 500 bucks for a pretty decent one and you want to make sure you invest in a good helmet because it's going to be something you wear that you rely on if, if anything bad were ever to happen. What else? What else? What else? I think that's good. I'm going to knock out a meditation and uh, keep you guys tuned in here on new things as we keep going. What is up everyone? So it's Sunday morning and Sunday mornings are kind of a cool day for me. I try to spend my time reflecting, focus on uh, resetting, planning, try to get the meditation out of the day and the workout out of the day, like early in the day. These are things that I do not compromise on. Sometimes I'll knock out errands, but it's usually early in the morning. And for the most part, I try to get rid of errands uh, through using my assistance and deliveries and kind of automating and streamlining things because I know I have to do them on a Sunday or really any given day. Uh, with Sundays, because I'm not going to work and I'm not necessarily focusing on that as much, um, I will go do that. And so when I say errands like shopping, um, those are more pleasurable things that I do, but they're not really things that are required for me. If you're shopping a lot and you're spending a lot of your time doing your own sort of chores, you might wanna look into trading money for time. If, uh, because ultimately if you're doing that kind of stuff and you have other projects and things you can do um, that are more income producing, that can get you where you wanna go as far as working on your dreams, on your goals, then why wouldn't you spend time doing that? Well, we're, we're just used to spending time not doing that because that's probably how our parents and our families and how we were raised, but it's not smart to do things that you can pay someone 20, 30, $50 an hour to do if your goal is to become a millionaire, for example. Um, just because you're not, gonna, you're not gonna get to where you wanna be by doing the activities that someone who would never be a millionaire would be doing. So it's about 
Um, I've been up for about an hour and a half now, and I'm going to do a 20 minute sit here and meditate, um, self-guided transcendental meditation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna shoot over and get all my errands done. I've got, I've got to return some items that um, I, I bought online at uh, like Nordstrom Rack, Nordstrom, and then I'm gonna pick up some groceries at Costco and return an item from co to Costco. I should be back here by like midday. Um, I'm also gonna buy cycle gear. That's the reason I'm really running these errands because all these shops are in the same area and I can get my cycle gear, which um, I shopped online. It's just, it's just a better deal at the actual store and I can try it on and, and fit it, which is necessary for getting the right stuff. And then, um, and then we'll see where the rest of the day goes. I pretty much nailed down the bike I'm gonna get. It's called the Yamaha MT-07. It's fast, it's a little scary, it's a little larger, it's almost a 700cc motor, um, but it's a dual, it's a, it's a twin, so it's not like a, a four cylinder. And because it's a twin, it's a little tamer in the sense that as a newer rider, it won't, it, it could get me in trouble, and it has the potential to kind of to do that because it can get up really fast and has really good acceleration. But at the same time, it's not going to be as as dangerous as like say a Ninja 600 or something where you're driving, you know, something that's a little bit more aggressive and and really just maybe harder to manage. This bike is really lightweight. It's very easy to manage. It's, it's easy to learn on. Um, you just have to have a good head on your shoulders to not be going crazy with uh, with what you're going to do. So. Um, let me know how you like these videos. Uh, I've been focusing on my sleep, optimizing that. Still experimenting with tryptophan, which is basically the same thing as L-tryptophan. I'm noticing that I wake up super early, like around 5, 4.35 in the morning, almost every time I take it before I go to bed. But that period of time between like when I take it and when I go to sleep is, is phenomenal. Like I sleep really deep. I go to sleep right away, like I drop within a couple minutes of, of, of my bed hitting the pillow, or my head hitting the pillow, and then um, I sleep definitely really solid. But then I wake up, and usually I'm up for like a half hour, an hour. Um, I just kind of come out of my, my sleep state. And then um, I've been experimenting with taking another tryptophan, half a milligram, or um, nothing at all, and just kind of laying there. But it takes me usually at least a half hour, maybe even an hour to go back to sleep. Um, and then I kind of wake up a little bit, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm getting better rest or not. So I'm kind of experimenting with that. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, still reading the book, Why We Sleep, because it's freaking long. And there's a section that I'm really interested in, which is lucid dreaming. So I'm probably going to go to the rabbit hole of learning about lucid dreaming. There's obviously um, a lot of writing on it. And if you're sleeping a third of your life, why not see if there's ways you can hack that and, and really optimize that? So that's kind of my thinking behind that. Uh, the bicycle store that I was shopping for motorcycles at yesterday is closed today. So I'm going to shop online for this model and see if I can find some quotes, dealerships, get some insurance lined up, and hopefully get a bike over this week. Super excited. Talk to you soon. Okay. Another thing I want to mention is uh, things like entertainment, the television, uh, food. Use those as rewards for like accomplishing really important stuff. So I've got a bunch of errands to run today and I'm going to get this motorcycle situation dialed. That is obviously kind of a reward, but at the same time, I've never had a car. And so it's going to be a means of transportation for me that I'm looking forward to having. Um, so I want to get through that get that project kind of fully executed, and then I can move on to whatever it is I wanna work on next. But I'm not gonna have lunch right now or breakfast. I don't need it. Like, you you don't really need to eat food all the time or snack or, or do whatever it is that um, a lot of people have kind of grown up thinking they need to do as far as consuming, whether it's media, uh, reading, like watching videos. Even if you think you're being productive by reading a book, Again, you're still a consumer. You're not you're not producing anything, right? The way you you I think level up and get to that next level is through actually producing value to a marketplace where there's a need. So, for example, for me, I've got a lot of background experience in reading about trauma in the last year year and a half. So, I think producing some sort of writing or content to guide other people going through that process of learning what it is and trying to understand it and maybe transcend it is something that would be production, right? 
thinking through how I would roll that out, um, what sort of content I could put together and creating the content around that. Again, there are things that you probably could do as a producer that could offer value to your friends, to your towards your goals, moving the needle that uh, are going to be more valuable than being, again, a consumer who who wants to sort of just reward themselves and, and jump into the sort of things you're not going to, you're not going to die. We're not, you know, unless you're literally like dying of malnutrition and your skin and bones anorexic, you don't need to be like constantly eating and consuming things. You can, you can go 24 hours uh, for the most part without eating anything. I certainly can throughout the weekends push my first meal to like four or 5 PM pretty easily. And that can be my oftentimes my last meal as well. It's great for your health. It it, pract- it teaches you some self discipline. It gets you away from that short term thinking, right? That that sort of thinking that oh, I should uh, give myself some sort of pleasure or gratification, and, and instead you use it as a reward system. So hope that's helpful. Uh, let me know what you think. All right, well, I've got some tough decisions to make here when I walk in. i got to figure out black, white, leather, not leather. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's going to be a little bit of a deciding process. So let's go in. I think I like the white jacket more than the black, but we'll find out.